becoming an instrument of angelic operations. Angels are placed in active service according to a person's activeness in the realm of prayer. When you are inactive your angels are inactive, but when you are active in warfare your angels are active in warfare. It's automatic. To become instruments of angelic service we must enter through two important gates, the gate of mortification and the gate of consecration. Sanctification gets you to a place in God where you are reconditioned to become a vessel in the likeness of God's presence. This sanctification is the power of separation which generates holiness, and creates the atmosphere for all divine possibilities in the domain of man. When God or an angel descend in a place to take charge of that atmosphere, the environment changes and becomes charged with the virtue of the divine. Within this realm, gifts are awakened, or heightened, the servant of God would begin to function under that very same influence. The presence of each angel influences the manifestation of a different virtue, role, and responsibility. Sanctification and mortification kill the desires of the flesh and awakens our sensitivity to the divine atmospheres, and all the human faculties of the servant of God to become active, they vibrates. When your faculties are awakened, you become an instrument for angelic service. Consecration and mortification requires two things. True repentance is when you are sorry about something and has a change of mind and heart about a certain action. When you truly repent you do not go back to it sanctification is where you set yourself apart for God's service, separated from the worldly things and glamour and fashion. It is where you become a sacred vessel for God holiness. Sanctification is a place where sin does not dwell. Purification is where you are made pure by Jesus' blood. It's where you are cleansed from impurities. Consecration is where you are hallowed, to be set apart, or to be holy. Exodus says, And shalt anoint them, and consecrate them, and sanctify them, that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. So consecration and sanctification are used interchangeably, but sanctification donates separation unto God from sin and impurities, and consecration means separate unto God for service. To fill the hand. To fill his hands with priestly duty, which symbolizes his admission into office, consecration is done by using oil, because it's more of a separation for ministerial function, whereby sanctification is more of a person's separation unto God. This place of consecration is where you are anointed with oil. You cannot enter any form of ministry without being anointed. Angels would pour oils upon the heads of people for service, oil of gladness, oils of joy, oils of healing, oils of mercy etc. David's statement in Psalms 23,5, Thou anointest my head with oil, was not speaking of a physical pouring of oil but an angelic operation where he was consecrated with oil. This oil would run down their body as their iniquities are cleansed. James 5.14, Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil. VS.15, And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. As we see when oil is applied to people their iniquities are automatically purged. Clothed for angelic service. Act 12.8, Then the angel said to him, Get dressed and put on your sandals, and he did so. Then he tells him, Put on your cloak and follow me. This was not just a deliverance event in the prison, but a principle implemented upon Peter. When we are operating in the realm of angels, there is a dress code spiritually that we must have, 1 Peter 5 colon 5, be clothed with humility, and we must put on our sandals, our feet must be shod with our shoes, the gospel of peace. Peace and humility are two virtues that will allow angels to work in your lives. Rev 318, and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness does not appear. When we have no peace and humility, we become naked in the spirit realm. Exo 40 9, And thou shalt take the anointing oil, and anoint the tabernacle, and all that is therein, and shalt hallow it, and all the vessels thereof, and it shall be holy. Exo 40 10, And thou shalt anoint the altar of the burnt offering, and all his vessels, and sanctify the altar, and it shall be an altar most holy. Exo 40 11, And thou shalt anoint the laver and his foot, and sanctify it. 
7 Spirits of Divine Righteousness, Isaiah 11 2 and the Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of Wisdom. Understanding, the Spirit of Counsel. Spirit of Might, the Spirit of Knowledge. The Fear of the Lord. When we walk under the influence of these spirit, we get discernment Isaiah 11 colon 3 and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears also, we get the righteousness of God to be balanced in justice, firm in reproving wrong things, Esa 11 colon 4 but with righteousness shall he judge the poor, and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth, but we also see the power to execute God's judgment and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked.